Hello, this is LJ Poffel, and this is a Microsoft Excel for Windows video on basic charts and graphs. And uh, the information in here should be transferable uh, and useful regardless of what operating system you work on. So what we've got here is a basic table that will be good for making a column chart and then a pie chart. Uh, and it's basically covering some artistic items that could be purchased for, by students for a course, the cost of those items, and the average cost per student for taking that course and paying for those items. So first, what we're going to do is start with making a stacked column. Now, charts and graphs in Excel are really easy to make. However, their real power comes from knowing what data it is that you want to chart. So in a lot of cases, people will need to become really familiar with data analysis and uh, setting up tables and determining what it is they actually want a chart or graph to uh, express for them. We're just going to work with the basic recommended ones at this point. But basically, in order to insert a chart, you're going to use the Insert tab and then the uh, charts group. And when you're going to do a chart, you're going to select a table, not a total. If you have a total row, don't select the total part, just the header row and the table contents, and then click up to recommended charts. Now, as you can see in the charts group, there are more specific chart types you could choose from. And again, when one is really uh, very familiar with charts and data analysis and knows from looking at their data that yes, they can get this type of chart. So I'm going to immediately come over here and get a statistic chart, or I'm going to immediately look for a column chart, or I'm going to immediately put in some sort of scatter chart. Otherwise, recommended charts is a good way to go. And when you click any of those, you'll get an insert chart panel with a tab for recommended charts and a tab for all charts. So the same panel will work either way that you go. These items are just to help be shortcuts for folks that are working in statistics or some other fields and they want to just be able to grab it without having to come into the insert chart and look for it. So in this case, for the data that we've selected, Excel is recommending that we use either column or bar charts. So let's go ahead and choose Let's see here, stacked column. The stacked column is just one way of expressing information, and uh, it's comp comparing the parts of a whole. So uh, let's take a look here and see what we get. And this is how the chart looks. Now, um, in here, you see that there's a chart title field, but we don't know anything about um, what this chart is from this. So what we actually can look at from the cost of the chart information is that we're looking at the differences between the quantity of item purchased, the item cost, the total cost, and the average per person. And then this is looking up to about uh, uh, $600 worth because that seems to be uh, the potential of, of how high these comparisons can go. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to type in here supplies. That will give me just a little bit more. So you could you can easily make that change if you'd like. The next thing we want to do is we want to come down and we want to add a pie chart just to see what kind of field we can get there. Now for some reason I don't actually have a caption in place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this caption and I'm going to scroll down a little bit and then I'm going to paste it here so that and then rename it. So we're going to use a pie chart. Now what I'm going to do now is once again I'm going to come in here and I'm going to select the same area and I'm going to go to insert recommended charts but I don't see any pie charts under recommended. So I'm going to come over to all charts and see what we get for pie. So this is looking at things by assignments and that may or may not be terribly useful to us. So um, I would actually like, let me just make sure I selected the whole chart. Ah, here we go. Sorry. Make sure you select the whole chart minus the total row, then come back over and do this. 
again, it's okay to make mistakes because that's how we learn. And I am always learning, even with uh, proficiency in any skills. So we're going to check pie chart. Okay, now this, this is what I was expecting to see, which is why I knew something was wrong. There's a little too much data in this chart over here, excuse me, in this table over here for Excel to be able to parse it into a pie chart. A pie chart would really look at like one thing like items and a cost or purpose and an average cost, that sort of thing. And it's got a little too much data here. So what we need to do is summarize this. So here's where we'll get a little taste of how pivot tables work. Because that way you, I can use a pivot table to summarize this data, decide from the pivot table how I want to summarize it, and then make a ch uh, pie chart from that. So instead of doing the recommended charts, I'm going to make sure that I select the table again, and I'm going to look at pivot table, insert a pivot table. Click this, do it from table range. And it's actually going to grab the whole table because the whole table actually has a name that I gave it. And I'm going to put it in the existing worksheet. And I'm going to put it so that it's a little bit below the existing chart. So I'm just going to click on cell A24. And Excel will read that in here. And then we'll click OK. And then what we get is this very interesting looking field that means absolutely nothing. And apparently it's pivot chart 72. I've been making a lot of those. What you do is when you get a pivot chart, a pivot table fields will open up. A panel will open up. This gives you the chance to choose what you would like to go into your chart. So when I look up here to the main um, table of information, what I'd like to do is a pie chart that's probably based on the items and the average per person. So down here, I'm going to use this summary table to do that by choosing in the pivot table fields items and average per person. And I'm simply going to accept Excel's default of placing things where the items are going to be in the rows and then the sum of the average per person will be in a column. And that's good enough for me. Now, I'm not going to do anything else in terms of the pivot table fields. So right now, I can go ahead and close this. What I want to do, however, is I want to make this look a little bit more appealing. So I'm going to come over and I'm going to select the, the uh, currency area that does not read currency, and I want to make it into currency format. So I'll click over to my Home tab ribbon go to the number area, and then choose currency, and there we go. And then the other thing I want to do <clears throat> is that this particular pivot table indicates that these are row labels. Well, that's nice, but that doesn't mean anything to me. So what I'm going to do is overwrite that with the word supplies. This way it will make more sense when we actually make a pie chart from it. Now I have a very simple table that should recommend itself to a pie chart. So I'm going to select this table minus the grand total down there, and then I'm going to insert, and then I'm going to go ahead and, in this case, since I know I want to do a pie chart, I'm going to use the icon that reads insert pie or donut chart and see what we get here. And what I'd like is a 2D pie. I'm going to click that, and this is what I get. And this makes more sense because it's looking at the items and then the portion of the pie in terms of the sum of the average amount per person that needs to be purchased. But there is one little item that's missing on here. And that is that these colors all look nice, but they don't tell me anything. So what I'm going to do is click once on the pie part of the chart. I'm going to right click it and I'm going to look in this drop down menu for add data labels and a little fly out box should open up that gives me a chance to add those and there we are now interestingly if we make this a little bigger it's really really hard or almost impossible to see the amount in the uh the oil paint paint area and you notice when you hover over each area of the chart it will actually give you a pop-up that lets you know what um, the the total that you're looking at so this one here is for pads this one here is for easel paper. This one here is for oil, but it's so dark you can barely see it. 
you can always go in here and see if there's a variant that you could do. So if I want to, I could um, format the data labels. See right here, this is where the data label for this pie part is, and I could drag it out here a little further. So that is how you get basic charts. Now, the one more thing you want to know is that when you click on a chart, you get access to the contextual chart design tab and its ribbon, and then also a chart format area. And this is something where you could come in and change the colors to a different palette. So maybe I want this to be in reds and blues, or maybe I want this to be in a monochromatic. For something like a stacked chart like this, you would not want to do monochromatic. It's too hard to see the differences, but you want something that does have very good contrast and that uses colors that are fairly close to, to what you need. So I'm going to just change this to this color here to, to play with it. Then you also can come in here and add chart elements if you'd like. And I'm not going to worry about going into any of these, but I could change the chart type from here. If I really didn't want this, I could come here and take a look and see if there's something in the bar chart that I like instead. This bar chart, however, there's so much information in here that this is a little more complicated to look at. So I'm going to just leave this alone. But down here, I could do the same thing with the pie chart. You could click on the pie chart and look at the design tab for it. And there are some basic options up here to make it so it's more readable. So in a way, that problem we had with this oil chart, uh, excuse me, part of the chart that showed the oil supplies, having um, we pulled out the information, which is good. You could come up here and choose a variant of the chart that's easier to read. On the other hand, the color differences aren't necessarily that great. You can also look for, you know, other, let's see what other options we have up here. So you could see this, see it, it tells you what the items are, but you might have to move some of the uh, call outs uh, away from each other. We could see this in white. So you have these different options up here in the design. And then the format would come in for either chart would be for if I wanted to come in and actually format the size of the text itself, um, all of the labels and so on. So that should give you a little bit of information on how you make charts and a few little things you could do to touch them up. And you even got a courtesy pivot table thrown in. I hope this was useful for you. Thanks very much. For